this is just something quick that I've picked up on. Like, whenever it's a, a woman writer writing relationships or or whatever else, like, oh, they're going to be together, whether it's a lesbian or straight couple or gay couple, like, that's just fine. But if a guy's trying to do something similar, it's like, oh, no, it's the dreaded male gaze. <laughs> Run away, everybody. It's like, why do, do people consider one form exploitive, but the other form is okay? Based on whoever's writing. It's like, seriously? <laughs> um... And one person, like, I guess I could, I could link this later or something. I don't know if I'm going to put this on the YouTube channel yet or on the uh, blog, but yeah, it's like, there is such a thing as the female gaze for sure. And why is that any less exploitive than the supposed male gaze? Is it because one is um, sanctioned kind of sexism over the other? Hmm. You know. <laughs> One has to wonder. Uh, yeah. It's like, as long as you're writing a story that has likable protagonists, interesting setting to, to whatever my wheelhouse is, I'm pretty much going to take a look. Um, at this point in my life, it's like life's too short to read something you're not going to be really engaged with. So who cares if it comes from a man or a woman? So, let's see. And some people depending on what the book's about, if the main draw isn't the romance, they get disappointed. But on the flip side with some people, the main draw isn't the romance, so they're excited because it's like, yay, this person isn't doing relationship drama shit. That's the reason why, even with Uplift Protocol, I mostly have people that are already married. Or, you know, in the case of Eliza and Ray, that'll develop a little bit later. Um... Uh, but I'm not going to go full ham in like, yes, let's put the Ikea on screen. It's like, no, there'll be implied moments later, but it's not like I'm going to be like, yes, this is X-rated. No, at, at best for me, it's probably going to be like PG-13. Because again, the, the keepers disappear in like a, like most of their drones disappear in a, a wave of like disintegration. They don't leave physical evidence behind, so that's the reason why a lot of people are like, wait, do they even exist? And now some people at Area 51 on the human side are like, oh my god, the stories about all those cows are real! What did they do to our cows? You'll find out later. <laughs> You'll find out later. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah. So, like, what is the difference? Why? Is it because all men are, are dirty, dirty people? It's like, uh, it's ridiculous. Because women can have just as much of a messed up, dirty mind as any guy can. Equal opportunity there. Based on the amount of ab books and everything else I see online every day, I'm trying to do searches. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Guess this is a really quick hits for today, but I guess I'll link this series below in case anybody's wants to read like kind of superhero setup but with a bunch of uh uh well I haven't read it myself but you know it's, it's a way to get eyeballs on more stuff I figure why not uh besides I, I do want to get more superhero pros to the forefront and if this is your cup of tea then I'd say you guys can go for it but based on one of the, the outlines for it, the blurb, it says, For some, hopes, dreams, and ambitions come easily. Not so much for Lilith. Created by one of the most feared supervillains, Shadowmind, she has no past of her own and only a passing familiarity with the world as it is. With a death sentence hanging over her head due to who created her and how, she escaped into the world to see and explore and perhaps find a meaning to her life. There she encounters heroes and villains alike, including those who brought her maker to justice. Gina and Rachel are superheroines in San Francisco, and f Freak Chance brings them into contact with Lilith. Uh, let's see. Th the, as they interact, the three grow to be friends, but with villains after them, who knows what the future will bring. I mean, it's pretty straightforward and to the point. Again, I'll link it below. You guys have a good day. <laughs> and remember, don't bring in sensitivity readers. Tell your story. And you know what, I can even apply that to whatever side of the political spectrum you're going to. But just remember, if you want to change something, make it. So if there's overabundance of nihilism, hopelessness, and not, uh, you know, navel-gazing protagonists that are pieces of shit, 
Well, we all got to band together and start writing the exact opposite of that to give people hope again. See ya, everybody. <laughs>